I have a sort of edgy punk rock sensibility, you know, through my plays. And when I got the job, some people in the theater world were like, oh, I didn't know you were, uh, you loved uh, video games. And one person who wasn't surprised was my father. He said, yeah, of course, of course you write video games. That's all you did when you were with me. I've always been a writer, so for me it was always a dream of mine to write a video game. I actually wrote a video game on my own time when I was early 20s. So the transition wasn't huge in that regard. For me, it was just diving into it with the same love of storytelling and uh, narrative structure as I did when I was writing plays or when I, when I write plays or film. I got involved in the project as uh, I've worked with one of the cinematics directors before, and uh, he actually just showed up one of my plays. It was actually one of my most trashy punk rock plays called Squeegee Nights. It's just a, it was an insane but passionate sort of play. He saw that and he said, I want to bring that to video games. He was like, I want to bring that edge, that's, you know, that spice that you guys have, like bring it to video games. You know, I feel, and I feel like the game world would love it. It's funny because all my plays always have a spiritual quest. I, I would usually write a spiritual quest form of structure, narrative structure in my plays. In a game, it's even crazier because it's a 40, 80, 100 hour context. So how do you make characters that people are gonna want to revisit for hundreds of hours? I think people want humility in characters and that's what I've always prided myself in is, is writing characters who have humility and are uh, characters that you care about even if, even if they are villains at times. Yeah, Bayek is one of the funnest characters I've ever had to write. It was, it was uh, such an original character in such an original setting that for me, it took me a while to realize how much you can sink into this character, inventing back, inventing backstory on history that you don't, that you have to read. You know, you have to research the history, then research, then invent his backstory on top of the history. You know, it's, it's just, it's nuts to have. To, your imagination has to, I find, work ten times as much in the context of Assassin's Creed because you have to work on the character themselves, how to connect them with human, in a human way, in a normal way, almost, and then add the history layer. So it's, it's like writing two or three plays at once, really. It started by building this world, like the setting was super important. And so we're kind of thrown into a world, which as a writer too, that's, I've never really had that, where you have that, that experience of like, oh yeah, we'll go hang out, hang out in ancient Egypt, and now let's start massaging stories everywhere into it. And uh, you know, it's a game, you want to engage with these historical figures without dishonoring the, the true history of them. Anytime I had a really nuanced question, I could send an email to this woman who literally wrote, could write in hieroglyphs, could, you know, speak ancient Egyptian. <laughs> it was amazing. For me, I approach every character as a character that you have to love. Uh, you, and you write them as, as not just one dimensional, not just one note, not based on stereotypes, not based on, uh, I don't know, cliche. I am always, you know, push, push against that, I feel. I think just make them well-rounded with good backstories and make them not uh, creatures to, to stereotype. I have a sort of edgy punk rock sensibility, you know, through my plays and, and films, and adding that is, is, is uh, I think, something that the brand loves, because it's, it's, it's Assassin's Creed. It's these hooded characters who are, you know, to me, they're the, the revolution behind the revolution. That's something about the brand that attracted me huge, is the deep lore, the ideological battle. Of, is it better to allow sort of chaos and freedom in people in order to create a sense of we can all pursue our own free will versus, you know, how much order do you need? How much order do you need in, in, in life? Like right now there's more infrastructure than there's ever been in our society. Let's take away some of that, you know? Let's start a revolution today. Turn a highway into, you know, Skate park now. I mean, once I had kids, I, I slowed down on video games, but now I've been able to ramp up and uh, play video games with my kids and, and share with them, and it's, it's, it's awesome. I feel like a better dad than I was before I got this job uh, because they love video games and they love Assassin's Creed. They're actually, my daughter's better at Assassin's Creed than I am playing it, and finally I'm considered the greatest dad ever. <laughs> it's a lot easier for them to love you if you were writing for Assassin's Creed.